to dance to that one. All right, welcome in to Under the Lights, Enough of Me Dancing. I'm Haley Lewis, and over the next 30 minutes, we're going to showcase some local Kansas City high school football teams competing on the field. Let's start things off with our game of the week. It's a century-old rivalry tonight, Odessa at Oak Grove. First and goal, handed off to number 32, Blake Heitman runs it in for the touchdown, 7-0. Bulldogs later in the first quarter, second and nine. That's Blake Heitman again with the carry. Touchdown number two for him on the night. And guess what? The Bulldogs are going to fake the extra point. Number 12, Garrett Bayless keeps the snap and runs it in. Bulldogs leading 15-0 in this one. We'll jump to the second quarter now. Second and goal for the Panthers. Senior Jamison Kirk running it in for the touchdown. The Panthers on the board, but the trailing 15-7. And here we go, another fake and another extra point. That's Garrett Bayless again for a two-point conversion. 23-7 at half. Odessa, though, goes on to win this one, 29-21. That feels good. Uh, we've had it for a few years, and we like hanging on to it. I, you know, we'll see. If we get to ha have it for one more year, so that'll be nice. Very big congratulations to Odessa. Now it's time for a little rivalry. St. Thomas Aquinas visiting Bishop Miege. The Stags looking to defend their house tonight. Stags ball, first to goal. Johnny Swainey with the carry, but Nick Rodriguez there holding him back from the goal line. Bishop Miege just short. Very next play. Ah, that didn't go well. Fumble, ball gets loose. Aquinas takes over. It's now the Saints ball. Quickly driving down the field. Scott Keene, that's to Camden Brown, and turns on the Jets. He's going to take off, just stop short of the end zone. Two plays later, and it's okay. Saints are going to be able to punch it in. After their PAT, no good, so they're leading 6-0 in the second quarter. Bishop Miege looking for the answer fast. Saints defense not going to let it happen. Nice QB sack there. Bishop Miege, though, comes back in this one. They end up winning it, 23-20. Now from the Kansas side, let's throw it back to Missouri. Ray Peck taking on Lee Summit North. We start in the end of the first quarter. Lee Summit North and Wildcat. Here comes Isaiah Mosey. Gets to the pylon. Touchdown, Lee Summit North. PAT, not good after this one, but the Broncos still leading Ray Peck 6-0. We go to the second quarter now. Mosey pass to Kevin Blaney. He gets through and into the end zone. Broncos adding on another one. 13-0 over Ray Peck. And here comes Ray Peck. Wide open pass down the sideline to Nick Carr. He's going to take it all the way into the house. Ray Peck finally getting on the board, but Lisa McNorse early lead really cost Ray Peck in this one. The Broncos go on to win it 41-14. All right, time to head back. Sunflower State this time. It's Jayhawks territory visiting the city. Lawrence Free State taking on Olathe North. And let me tell you, it was birds only at ODAC tonight. Fire roads of Lawrence Free State taking on the Eagles from Olathe North. That's Noah Palmer finding Jacob Parrish for the big gain. Eagles get the chunk play, but are stopped short on the fourth down. Next possession. Here comes Jacob Parrish handing this one himself. Touchdown Eagles, but it's going to be a little bit of some defense now. Well, that's some Cowboys now, but then here comes the defense. All right, here we go. It's a family affair this time. Jason comes up with the interception. Eagles would lead 7-0 at the half. They go on to win this one easily, 21-7. Well, guys, it's already time to take our first break as we continue to stay under the lights. Make sure you stick with us when we return. Crane Valley taking on the Truman Patriots. We'll see you after the break. Welcome back into Under the Lights. We still got plenty more highlights headed your way. How about we kick it off with my alma mater, the Truman Patriots. No bias here, maybe a little bit, but here we go. We're getting ready for this matchup. Now, who says kickers don't get any love? Let's start off with the 32-yard field goal by the Eagles, Austin Schmidt. Grain Valley, though, going to score the first touchdown of the night. That's DJ Harris running in for a three-yard score. Eagles up 10-0. Now, for all you run DMC fans out there on the ensuring kick, it's time to get tricky, tricky, tricky. That's Anthony Greco recovering the onside kick. Next play, Larson hits Logan Bratt for a 42-yarder. He takes it down to the three-yard line. It's time for Jason Wyatt to plow in for a three-yard touchdown. Eagles leading 17-0. They go on to win this one 48-13. Let's go to Winnetonka. 
At Grandview, we pick up middle first quarter. That's Devin Sontag to Jordan Essex on the slant. He rumbles 52 yards down to the Grandview 13. A couple plays later, Sontag here with the jump pass to Hunter Martin for a little three-yard touchdown when Adonka taking a 7-0 lead early second quarter. Grandview going for it on fourth and long on their side of the field. Kyle Wright tries to convert. He can't when Atonka takes over on downs. That would lead to this Landon Hinkle 25-yard field goal when Atonka taking a 10-point lead. When Atonka defeats Grandview 24-20. All right, it's time for our Metro matchup moment of the night. Sponsored by Deep Squally Moore Law Firm. Here we go. Schlegel taken on Washington. Middle of the second quarter. Daniel Ortodon on the eight yard touchdown run. That's going to make it 6 0 Washington. Still second quarter. Washington airing it out deep. Aloney Fishback comes up with the interception for Schlegel, but it would not be enough. Washington wins it in a shutout 22 0. Remember, that was our Metro matchup moment of the night, sponsored by Deep Squally Law or Deep Squally Moore Law Firm. And center taking on Baser Linwood first quarter. Ja'Cory Love with the five-yard touchdown run. Center making it 7-0, middle second quarter. That's Zach Sissamore with the three-yard touchdown run. Baser makes it 2014. They go on to win this one 26-21. Now, don't forget you got to download our high school podcast with Preps KC, Dion Clisso, and our own Mick Schaefer. Look for Snap Tackle Pod on any platform you get on podcasts. Speaking of the star of that podcast, we are now joined by our own star in studio, Dion Clisso of Preps KC. Dion, I don't know if the rain caught you in any of the action tonight, but now that the dust has all settled, you got to tell me, what was your favorite game of the night? Well, really, uh, I like that base for Linwood center game, especially since we didn't know at 11 o'clock this morning that was going to be a game. <laughs> um, and that's, it's a, it's a fantastic matchup. And you saw 26-21 in that game, and it was back and forth all night long. Two really good running backs, Zach Sizemore for base, base for Linwood and uh, Ja'Cory Juice uh, for uh, center. And, um, you know, he really is an outstanding tailback and, and a good game back and forth. A little side note of that game, it's the first matchup between Rod Stahlbomber, the base for Linwood coach, and Brian DeLong, the center coach, since the All-Star game of 2016, won by DeLong. So Stahlbomber gets his revenge finally after losing the All-Star game. Good win for good, good, good win and good game for both teams. A real good test between both those teams. Dion, it's almost like you know high school football or something. <laughs> all right, got to ask you, you know, what game out of all the games surprised you the most tonight, in your opinion? Well, I kind of felt like Olathe North and Free State might be a shootout back and forth, but it turned into a defensive uh, battle with North winning 21 to 7. I think this says a lot about Free State and their defense and their ability to, to hold that Olathe North offense in check. And um, really, I think this says that Free State is back. They, they're 2 and 1 now after going winless last year. Olathe North grinds out a tough win. And I think you're seeing in the Sunflower League, you basically have Mill Valley, Olathe North, and, and, and Lawrence Free State there at the top. And then they've got all the EKL schools like Blue Valley North and Blue Valley Northwest to uh, both roll tonight. Now, I know we're only a few weeks into this whole shindig, but way, 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 way too early Simone Award prediction. Who, who do you have on the radar? Well, uh, Henry Martin from Blue Valley North has had 12 touchdowns through his first two games and had another big night tonight. Um, he probably is leading the way in that sense. And uh, uh, also, Mikey Polly, the, the quarterback from Blue Valley Northwest, is off to a great start as well. So two quarterbacks over there in the Blue Valley District are playing really well. You know, on the Missouri side, you know, the best team is probably uh, Liberty North, but they you know play two quarterbacks, play two running backs, have five receivers, so they haven't even had anybody who really steps out. Jaden Doss, the outstanding receiver now, tailback for Ray Peck, has, uh, has been pretty good for them. And, you know, he'll only touch it six times, but he usually has about 100 yards and a touchdown. A, a guy that uh, maybe hasn't put up huge stats was a, a, the quarterback for a really good team, at least I'm North, is Trey Baker, too. So those guys, you know, three, four weeks in, we're seeing a few trends. But uh, I think as we get closer to the end of the season and get into the postseason, uh, you'll see some people really emerge. All right. Well, you heard it here first from Dion. We're going to check back in with you later. Thanks so much for joining us. He will again rejoin us in just a bit to reveal our newest High V game of the week and how you can vote for next week. So don't go anywhere. We are going to release the latest High V game of the week vote right after this. We'll see you then.